But before we get started, uh, there was a lighting and VFX update for Wreckfest. It came with a buff to the Speedbird GT and uh, fixes to the paint and stuff. The buff is a load of hidden statistics, so I can't really cover them very easily, but it grips and handles much better now. Along with the update has come a myriad of bugs and problems. Uh, there is random game crashes, servers have this memory leaking problem which causes them to randomly crash, the server message is broken, some people including myself are getting lag and stuttering problems, and as far as I can tell there's no discernible way to tell if you get it aside from just playing the game. There's people with worse computers than me, don't get a problem, people with significantly better computers than me and they cannot play the game. It's funny how a rushed update always seems to have loads of problems with it. You'd have thought that devs knew this by now, the amount of AAA titles that are buggy messes, but uh, apparently not. Whatever, I digress. On to the video. Welcome to part 4 of Wreckfest Science. Today we're going to cover uh, tuning. Uh, this is a very large topic to be sure, and I could easily go on for 2 or 3 hours about tuning specifically, and it's minute differences. Uh, I'll try not to though. <clears throat> There's four different tuning options in Wreckfest. Suspension, gearing, differential and brake bias. We'll cover each tuning option in order as they appear. Uh, I've timestamped each so you can skip to the specific one that you want to refer to if you want specific information. There is actually a description uh, you'll have probably noticed but I find it wholly useless. It's vague and often not true about the practical effect it has in game. Take gearing for example, quote, generally long gearing results in higher top speeds and slower acceleration, end quote. Generally is a very good term to use here because it almost never applies. Sure the differences between 1 and 5 gears is going to be noticeable when driving something like the speedy but it's almost only in C class where you don't really have the power in the first place. Um, something I would like to cover before we get started is how I tune my cars. By that I mean like my preferences, etc. Uh, essentially this is just laziness. I can't really be bothered to tune my cars specifically for each track, I just don't see the point. The time cut by having slightly better gearing for a few of the corners can easily be made up for in the majority of players with better line choice. You also get more used to the way the car drives and you'll get more used to the consistent gearing and shifting with momentum, etc. All that being said, let's get started. So, suspension. What does it do? Well, the differences between 1 and 5 suspension has an obvious effect on the car's ride height, but how does this actually translate onto the car? Well, your suspension compresses under acceleration, so you'll sacrifice some of the power in the engine to the suspension compressing. You'll also load the suspension up when cornering. We call this body roll. The harder your suspension is, the less of an effect this will be on the car, although softer suspension maintains better contact with the floor which makes power delivery more consistent, albeit worse, and steering more consistent, but it will feel loose. When you land a jump or are driving on a particularly rough track, the constant undulations in the driving surface can affect the direction the car drives in, making it harder to control with very stiff suspension. It can also lead to the car bottoming out. This is where the suspension reaches maximum travel under compression, and while it's hard to see, you can absolutely feel it. The car will lose some control and some steering, um, losing you some time. It kind of varies depending on the way you land. Only sort of 0.10 of a second or so, but as I've said before, it adds up quickly. Of course, every car rides a different height and has different suspension. Even tournament versions of the base game cars have this. Its suspension will be different. The only car that comes to mind that is the same, or very similar at least, is the Super Venom and the Venom, which when gearing is set to 5 in the Super Venom, handles almost identically to the Venom on 1 gears, except of course you got 6. Unfortunately I can't recommend a suspension tuning specifically for all cars for you because of this. Um, a few cars that benefit from softer suspension though would be the Hunter Panther, the Killer Bee S, the Sweeper, the Boomer RS and the Razor. All of these have very short and very hard suspension at 5, which it's good for tracks like Motor City, and it renders the car almost undrivable on tracks like Clayridge, for example. If I'm on a more traditional racetrack like Espadalen or Pine Hills Main, I'll stick all of these cars to 5 because there isn't really anywhere where I'll benefit from having the softer suspension. 
The only car I've never put above 4 is the Razor because of how almost ridiculously stiff it is. Aside from that, I usually won't run cars on 5 suspension because, as I said, I don't really like changing my tuning, um, so I usually run 3 or 4, kind of edging more towards 4 though. I don't really find that excessively soft suspension is all too helpful for me. You generally want to run it as stiff as you think you can drive. Okay then, so what are the benefits in short? Harder suspension will respond more to the driving surface, you'll accelerate faster because the suspension isn't compressing under your acceleration and taking some power from the engine, and your cornering will be better because there is less body roll in the car. The disadvantages of hard suspension is some rumble strips will throw the car off the track if you hit them badly, uh, rough tracks with large bumps will cause the suspension to bottom out easily and you'll lose a little bit of control, and when your suspension is damaged it'll behave far less predictably. The advantages of soft suspension, however, is that you will maintain better contact with the floor, giving you more consistent power delivery. Steering will also be far more consistent on rough terrain. Some corners that have ridges on the inside of them and rumble strip. Uh, with soft suspension you can drive into these far more aggressively and have very few issues, and when the suspension is damaged it will be far more predictable on bumps. The disadvantages are worse acceleration because your suspension compresses under power, taking some of that power away from the engine, your turning will be worse as well because it will slide out more willingly and lean a lot more through the turns. Next up, let's cover gearing. Gearing is probably the most complicated tuning option here. In as simple terms as possible, you want your gearing to be tuned in such a way that the car will not top out on the fastest tracks in the game. Uh, topping out, by the way, is reaching the rev limiter at the end of the last gear. But it's not quite that simple. Let's take the TriStar for example. We find that we're shifting fine and staying in the power band, and then we get to 5th gear, and where does all of our power go? The engine drops really low in the revs, significantly lower than it has done between 3rd to 4th, or 3rd, 2nd to 3rd. This is called overdrive. It'll be the last gear, but only on some cars. Uh, another example might be the Raven, although it's not quite so pronounced in the Raven. Let's go back to a word I said earlier. Power band. What is power band? Well, if Wikipedia is to be believed, it's between four and six thousand RPM. Okay, but what about the Road Slayer or the Nexus? Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. When driving using manual gears, you will subconsciously stay within the power band to an extent. Depending on how well you can shift, you'll kind of pick up when to shift based on how quick you're going and how well you maintain speed. The Super Venom is a good example for finding where a power band is because you get when you get into the power band it starts to, well, for lack of a better term, begin to scream. Hopefully you can hear what I mean. Uh, it's roughly between 4900 and 6000 RPM, so I guess Wikipedia wasn't entirely wrong. Some cars like the Starbeast SS, before it was buffed, have a very difficult to optimise power band because it sits so high in the revs that when you shift up you come out of the power band. Combining that with how many gears it has makes the car quite poor. Generally speaking, torquey engines will almost always have very few gears, typically four or so. Uh, just an aside, this is actually why the Super Venom is so powerful. It's got the exact same engine as the Venom, which is a very torquey engine, but it has two extra gears. Usually bow engines like that will only have four gears, and torquey engines like that will perform better with long gear ratios. Uh, certainly better than something like the Nexus or the Boomer RS, which don't have as much power to begin with. Of course though, this effect is far less pronounced than driving a BRA class car, but it is noticeable still. To tune gearing, I would go onto a track like the Sandstone Main or Boulder Bank Short and see how fast you can reasonably go. The track I'm on here is the fastest speeds you can get to in the base game. Then I would set your tuning as such to where you will be at the end or in the middle of the power band at those maximum achievable speeds. Stuff like very high speed turns, especially in C-Class, can quite easily affect your speed. In this example, you see how my gearing allows me to keep in the power band achieving nearly 120 miles an hour compared to just 116 with the short gearing that you first saw. Uh, not only did I do that for less time, 
but I even took a better line with the short gearing and it's still 45 miles an hour slower. This affects our time delta significantly. Next up we have the differential. Lock it. Okay, fine. I'll explain a bit about the differential and what it actually does. The differential when unlocked allows the car's driving wheels to spin at a different rate. However, when it is locked it forces them to spin at the same rate, and when it sits too limited it will force the inside wheel to spin, but not quite at the same speed as the outside wheel. This will affect two things, grip and oversteer. They're kind of the same thing, really. Wreckfest drives like a rally game more than anything else. Uh, especially something like, say, Forza or Assetto Corsa. Oversteering through corners is almost, if not always, faster than just maintaining grip and getting better power delivery. The cars are just too slidey for that, even on tarmac. Some cars grip better than others, of course, <coughs> riding, uh, but even oversteering in that is worth it. I'm not covering front-wheel drive, because front-wheel drive sucks, at least until they release a powerhouse of a front-wheel drive car. If you're newer to the game, and you drive A-Class a lot, you may find limited slip diff better for you, but be sure to run harder suspension to keep your weight distribution with the ground better. The car lifts up under power, and as you corner, um, less power will be put through wheels with less weight on it, stiff suspension will help to counter that a little bit. The advantages of a lock differential are more consistent and generally better oversteer, the car will not step out from behind you if you use stability control, unless you're driving the bull guard, but that car's insane anyway. It's actually the only car I don't use a locked diff in. Your power delivery is also far better. Uh, not 60 times the locked diff is better because power is being forced at the same rate through both wheels. Uh, like I said before, unless you're new to the game playing higher classes a lot, just lock the diff. It's easily controllable with very little practice. Last but not least, we have brake bias. I asked in the official Repfest Discord what the ratios were with each tuning, but nobody responded. So we're going to do some science. Gearing is measured in percentage, so 1% or in Repfest 1 is locking the rear wheels under braking, and 100% or 5 is locking the front wheels under braking, and 50% is equal braking between front and rear. So what I'm going to do is take my Super Venom at 364 tuning its gearing to 2 and take 4 corners from absolute max speed of 2 gears, uh, which in Super Venom is 122 miles an hour, and let's see how my braking compares through all of them. I'm going to do 3 laps each time and I'm going to show you the best lap from all 3 of each. Tuning. Skip the time on the screen for the results. But I'll actually try and be a bit conservative while driving this thing on one brakes. Go nearly a whole car's length further into that. I need to do another lap. Oh fuck. Nice.
Whoa, 57 seconds. What the lap time? How'd I do that? Sadly, that time didn't count because breakfast was still verifying itself. I'm not angry that I missed out on a top 150 lap time, no. Not at all. Okay, so why was that lap time so much faster than the other four? Well, my lines were much better, but I was also able to brake in conjunction with the handbrake. And when I brake and was set all the way to the front, it was significantly more efficient on tarmac. If I were to try this on sandstone, boulder bank, or, well, basically any other track in the game, it wouldn't be anywhere near as good. Front biased brakes help you stop more effectively than rear biased brakes, especially if you find yourself hand braking a lot, it seems, on tarmac. The handbrake locks the rear wheels, so the only effect from braking, if your brakes are set to say one or two, is from the minute amount of front braking that you get from those ratios. The ratios for braking in order are roughly 90-10, 70-30, 50-50, 30-70, 10-90. This explains why braking is so much better on tarmac, but we will still understeer badly on dirt using front wheel biased braking. So, what tuning should you use then? Well, it seems that keeping my braking the same is a bad idea for tarmac tracks, as I can improve my lap time by over 3 seconds while maxing out the revs in last gear. But overall, if you can't be bothered to set your tuning, I'd probably aim for something like this. Perhaps setting your suspension to 4 on slightly bumpier tracks. Try to keep your gearing at about 6.0 and below. This way, it will ensure that on most cars you'll stay effectively within the power band. If you've only got 4 gears or so, maybe aim for about 5.5-ish, 4 C-Class. Pretty much every car in the game, in B and A-Class, you can set to uh, gearing 4 and 5 and usually you'll be fine. With all that being said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for watching Breakfast Science.